Hello everyone, I hope you're all staying strong and well during quarantine. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Oriana, and I just want to spend some time today discussing Black Lives Matter, its origin, and a couple of common misconceptions regarding the movement. Let's begin. One of the first things that I wanted to talk about was the origin of the movement. On February 26, 2012, Trayvon Martin, who was only 17 years old at the time, was tragically shot and killed by George Zimmerman, who was a neighborhood watch guard at the time in Sanford, Florida. On July 13, 2013, George Zimmerman was acquitted of all his charges, which caused many people to turn to social media to express their anger, frustration, and dismay. One of those people being the co-founder of Black Lives Matter, Alicia Garza. She took to Facebook to express the following message. Black people, I love you, I love us, our lives matter, black lives matter. One of her friends, Patrice Colors, turned the last three words of that statement into a hashtag. The pair was joined by Obo Tometi, and the three of them worked together to make Black Lives Matter more than a virtual initiative. So people can truly see the message that they want to end white supremacy, end police brutality, all the while creating a space where Black people can imagine and dream big. The movement really took off in 2014, when Michael Brown was tragically killed on August 9th of that same year. Protests sparked all around the country, trying to show that we are tired and sick of being killed. And of course, these protests and the movement in general were met with heavy opposition, and this is why I want to share a couple of common misconceptions today in order to give people a better idea of what Black Lives Matter truly means. And the first misconception I would like to discuss has to do with the title, which is often met with, all lives matter, white lives matter too, why only black lives matter, that's not fair, that's not right. But what these people fail to recognize is that we never said black lives only matter, we said black lives matter too. It's important to recognize that throughout history, time and time again, black lives are forgotten, we're treated inferior. As Alicia Garza once pointed out, race in this country and worldwide is on a spectrum where it's white and it's black. And the darker you are on the spectrum, the more you're subject to prejudice and discrimination simply because of your skin color. This is not to say that a white person can't live a hard life. But their skin color alone is not going to cause the problems that a black person or a darker person's skin color would cause. And of course, there are people who oppose the statement saying oppression does not exist, neither does racism. Black people only want to be treated as they're entitled. Um, there are people, I heard one girl say something along the lines of we, they have Black History Month, they have Black radios, they have Black TVs, they have... Um, they have black pageants, but if a white person were to do any of these things, they'd be called a racist. And it's really important to understand, you know, our roots as Africans were brought to America as slaves, where we were stripped of our rights, we were whipped, we were dehydrated, we were starved, we were treated as poverty, we were inferior. We had no rights. We couldn't read, we couldn't write, we couldn't do anything without getting in trouble. Even though the severity of our struggles have lessened to a certain degree, they are still very prominent. They can be very aggressive, such as someone saying, I'm going to teach my grandchildren to hate black people, which I've heard before, or calling us the N-word or saying, black people should still be slaves. Or they can be more passive aggressive, which is called microaggressions, where people could say something like, the quality of your hair is kind of weird, or you have a father, or you don't sound black, stuff of that nature. These microaggressions are often tied to stereotypes that are meant to hold down the black community, such as black families don't have fathers or black men leave their children, um, black people are aggressive, they are loud, they're ghetto, they don't know how to behave, they involve themselves in gang activity, they sell drugs, and a lot of them go on to degrade the black community. And it's so important for all races, no matter who you are, even if an individual, I guess, validates a stereotype, you should not take that to put a label on the whole entire race. And that, says, that goes for everybody. It's so important to train yourself to, if you think something stereotypical, to tell yourself, don't say that or don't think that. One thing that I definitely learned and try to practice and incorporate into my life is that you may not have control over your first thought. 
but you have control over your second thought and your first action. So it's so important to catch yourself so you don't try to um, prolong these stereotypes. And of course, our struggles don't end there. We also have to deal with the wealth gap. There was a 2016 study that showed that white families were able to make 10 times more on average than black families. And of course, this does not mean that a black family cannot make a substantial amount of money, but the statistics speak for themselves. Of course, we still have to deal with police brutality and hate crimes. There's one Harvard study that shows that black people are three times more likely to die from a police encounter than a white person. By listing all these struggles, there's some people who believe that black people like to play the victim card. And I think it's so important to realize that as black people, as darker skinned people, we have a certain lens that a white person would not have access to. And since we have this lens, we're able to offer them information. So it's important not to gaslight us when we talk to you about certain issues that affect us predominantly. So of course, we know and acknowledge that all lives matter. That's a fact. But at the end of the day, black lives are often treated as if we don't. Hence why the name is so important. Last part about the name that I would like to highlight is the fact that it brings attention to the people who are affected by the racial spectrum the most. This ideology is well explained by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who once said, feminism is about justice for everyone, but you have to name your problem. And the problem is that women have been excluded. As previously implied, this ideology can be used to explain why black is the adjective and black lives matter. It wasn't used to exclude any other racial group, but to highlight the group that struggles the most in regards to race in this country. Another misconception that I would like to address is that black lives matter is a domestic terrorist group. There are two ways to approach this. One, is not documented as a terrorist group in the first place. And when I say this is that there is a list of, under the State Department of terrorist groups and Black Lives Matter is simply not part of that list. There's also a database where there are over 200,000 terrorist incidents and Black Lives Matter, once again, is not a part of that list or within that database. The other way to view it is that Black Lives Matter overall is a very peaceful organization. Of course, there were violent protests. Some started off violent and some grew violent over time, especially after police aggravation through throwing tear gas, firing rubber bullets, pushing protesters and stealing their supplies. But at the end of the day, most of the protests have been very peaceful despite what media has shown us. In fact, in 2019, Black Lives Matter became the first organization ever to win a Sydney Peace Prize. Upon receiving the award, Patrice Culler said, it is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. As we know, love and support are both inextricably linked to peace. So it's very important that Patrice Cullors alluded to Black Lives Matter's call to action for peace and justice for everyone, especially those affected by our society's structures. The last thing that I want to point out between Black Lives Matter and peace is the slogan, no justice, no peace. The slogan isn't necessarily calling upon violence, but it's calling upon our government to take responsibility in order to create the justice and change that we're asking for. The last two misconceptions I would like to talk about are related to each other. The first one being ACAB. If you don't know what that means, excuse my language, it stands for all cops are bastards. This slogan has been around since the 1940s and has been used by multiple groups. In regards to Black Lives Matter supporters, we're not saying that every single cop is a bad person. We're saying that the system in general is bastardized or corrupted and we need it to change. One of the ways we hope to create this change is by defunding the police. When people initially hear the fund they police, they think that crime rates are going to rise and things are going to get a lot worse than what they are now, which is the last and final misconception. It's important to realize when we ask to defund the police, we're asking to reallocate these funds to communities that really need it. So you can provide programs that focus on youth development, mental health, health in general, and increasing wages. When you're able to provide these resources to these communities, they're able to thrive from within instead of being bounded by the system that hurts them at the end of the day. With that being said, I was able to cover the main misconceptions about Black Lives Matter and I have one final thing to say before I conclude this video. I like to think of Black Lives Matter and its opposition like watching a movie. 
As you look at the screen, you can see tiny pixels that make up the bigger picture. If you spend the time looking and analyzing at all the pixels, you're going to miss the film in front of you. The same thing applies to Black Lives Matter. If you spend time pinpointing every single flaw, trying to invalidate the whole movement, you're going to miss out on all the work that has done to fight for equality for all of us. I hope that analogy resonates within some of you. If not, I hope you were able to learn at least one thing from this video. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye!